and welcome to Take 10 on Tuesdays with the Tennessee Tribune. Our guest today is Reverend Kelly Miller Smith Jr., pastor of First Baptist Church, Capitol Hill. And this year, 2015, the church is celebrating its 150th anniversary, the sesquicentennial. Sesquicentennial. Yes. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a hard word. Matter of fact, it took me a while to learn how to say it, and then I had to teach it to the congregation. Some already knew it because they just know things like that. Right. But it was fun learning that as well. Yes. Sesquicentennial. Sesquicentennial. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I wanted to talk to you about a couple of things. As I was doing my research, uh, one of the factoids that I ran across was First Baptist Church Capitol Hill is considered the oldest continually operating African American church in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And this particular article dated it back to 1835 mm -hmm. when it started out small. Mm -hmm. And so one of my questions was why not 185th anniversary mm -hmm. as opposed to 150th? Right. Well, um, we go back to when the church was actually an independent congregation and had uh, complete independence from the white congregation from which we broke. Uh, and that was in 1865. However, the years before that, uh, the congregation was a mission of that church, which means we still have relationship, association. Um, there are still some compensation, some other resources that were derived from the, uh, from the white congregation. Okay. And so, but to be an independent congregation, we've been that since 1865. Okay, so right after the end of the Civil War. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, it became an independent church. Mm -hmm. And so tell me a little bit about those beginnings of, of the independent church. And I understand the first pastor was Nelson Mary, That's which correct. there is Nelson mm -hmm. Mary Way, mm -hmm. and uh, you're also near Rosa Parks. That is correct. Avenue. So mm -hmm. uh, tell us about Nelson Mary, and I know he was there until 1884 when That's he right. passed away. That is correct. Well, he was a very significant uh, person, not only in terms of the city of Nashville, well, the church, but also the city of Nashville and the community all across the state. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. when he passed away, the newspaper talked about the fact that he was uh, perhaps one of the most significant uh, colored um, clergy uh, in the state at the time. Mm -hmm. Because not only did he establish First Baptist Church Capitol Hill, but he also established several other churches throughout the state of Tennessee oh, uh, as a part of his understanding of the mission of the church. Uh, he was uh, a slave when oh, he, he was, was born. He was born mm -hmm. a slave mm -hmm. and then uh, actually from Kentucky and was given uh, as you know, they treat, treated slaves as property. He right. was given to the First Baptist Church uh, uh, of Nashville. Mm -hmm. And when he was given there, they made him a sexton, which in essence was a custodian, a, a janitor right. uh, there at the church and uh, was baptized by the pastor uh, at that time and began to demonstrate a calling and understanding in terms of ministry and through his calling and understanding of ministry. Uh, they began to use him in different kinds of ways, uh, including uh, leading the mission uh, of the congregation, which uh, was our uh, predecessor, and then uh, being the first pastor of the congregation itself. Oh, I see. Okay. One of the interesting things about Nelson Mary, and I did not realize this until uh, the first Sunday of this month, is that he was baptized by uh, the pastor of First Baptist, who was also one of the organizers of the Southern Baptist Convention. Is that right? And yeah, even though the congregation itself, our congregation has never been a Southern Baptist church, but it's an interesting irony in that a convention that was established because of the fact that uh, they had uh, opposition to slavery. Mm -hmm. uh, he himself baptized uh, a man who would go on and establish a congregation that would be very instrumental in leading uh, liberative movements uh, at that age, I mean, at that time, up, up until the present age. Oh, wow. And now you're affiliated with American Baptists? We are with... triply aligned, actually, with American Baptist churches, with the Progressive National Baptist churches, okay. as well as the, excuse me, Progressive National Baptist Convention and the National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated. Oh, wow. There are a whole lot of Baptist groups out there. <laughs> right, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> the, I, think I, I heard someone that. say once that uh, there are probably more Baptists than there are people. <laughs> <laughs> Well, tell me, so 1884 is when he passed away, so there have only actually been a 
few pastors. Actually, there have been a lot of pastors. There, there have been a lot. Yeah, okay. I'm pastor number twenty. Number twenty. My okay. father was number sixteen. Okay. And he died. My father died in 1984. Oh wow. And so in the years since his passing, there have been three other pastors between him and me. Mm-hmm. Okay. And now, uh, recently. In January, mm-hmm. you started the the celebration, and you celebrated with four other churches. That is correct. And now, how how did that work, and why was that? Done? Well, we wanted to start off with something that um, helped to uh, focus upon our theme. Our theme is dealing with from generation to generation. With the first quarter of the year, we're focusing on remembering. Second quarter, on refocusing. Excuse me, on um, rejoicing. The third quarter, dealing with refocusing, and the last quarter, dealing with rededicating. Oh, and so, uh, in the remembering section, we wanted to talk about our roots and right. from whence we've come. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, we invited the First Baptist Church of Nashville to come and to share with us. And we wanted to also invite other churches that have their roots in us. And so we invited the Spruce Street Baptist Church, the Mount Olive Baptist Church, as well as New Visions Baptist Church. Oh, so all those churches, those churches came out of First Baptist Church Capitol Hill. That is correct. There's actually one other congregation that came out, but it has it it had since come back in, came back in sometime in the Mm sixties. And so um, it was a wonderful celebration. Sanctuary was full. Um, Dr. Frank Lewis, who's the pastor of First Baptist Church of Nashville, preached for us, did a wonderful job. He had a combined choir, wonderful reception afterwards, and it was a great way for us to start our year off. Oh, wow. Now tell us a little bit, what was it like for you to grow up in First Baptist Church, Capitol Hill, and now lead the church? I used to, uh, in growing up in First Baptist, think it, thought it was just an ideal congregation, mm-hmm. just thought that everything about it was wonderful. You know, I love the music of the church. Obviously, I love the preaching of the church, and I just thought that everybody in the church was angelic uh, when I was growing up. Right. Uh, subsequent to that, <laughs> I understand that we sometimes uh, have some other things under our angelic robes mm-hmm. that uh, demonstrate the fact that we're not all angels, but we're all sinners saved by grace. Mm-hmm. And uh, so. Um, and growing up there, though, I just th- thought it was a wonderful church. I loved going to church. I loved singing in the choir. I loved participating. Now, granted, I was the pastor's son, and my sisters were uh, uh, children of the pastor as well, so we just developed a nice affinity toward the van. Mm-hmm. And um, so it was great from that perspective. Never really thought that I would pastor the congregation. Um, hmm. So that it, was not always a dream. It was not a dream. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a thought in the back of my head. Mm-hmm. But I always thought that no, the Lord is going to always take me someplace else, mm-hmm. because each of the time that each of the times they've called pastor subsequent to my father's death, that uh, there were opportunities when I could have been considered, mm-hmm. but my name was never in the hat mm-hmm. uh, at all. It was only at this time, uh, four years ago, that uh, the decision, uh, well, the opportunity presented itself, and the Lord said that perhaps it is time for me to come home and okay. to serve as the pastor of the congregation. I was in Knoxville, Tennessee, pastoring for 19 years. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now you're home. And now I'm home. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And leading. It's been good. Yeah. It's been good. It's yeah. been a great four years. Mm-hmm. And where, so one, 150 years, mm-hmm. where do you see the next 10 years, the next 50 years, uh, First Baptist Church, Capitol Hill going? What's well, ahead? In terms of the next uh, 10 years or so, obviously, we're looking for uh, an opportunity for us to re-establish who we are as a congregation. The church has gone through some very difficult times uh, in the years since my father has has passed. There was a period of time we were even out of the building um, for several years. When I say a period of time, so it was several years that we were out of the building. Mm-hmm. There were some other challenges that we've had to face. And uh, part of what I'm intending to do during my time as pastor is to help us to uh, work through uh, the, the, the last bit of these challenges and primarily some financial ones mm-hmm. and then get the church in a position where it can begin to see again, understand again uh, what it is that we're called to do. We are called to address issues of social justice. We're called to uh, address issues that will make a difference in terms of not only our own church but the mm-hmm. community around us. And I think that is a part of the vision 
that we see. We're also trying to help others to see that we are a congregation that uh, is not seeking to be like any other congregation here in the city of Nashville, mm -hmm. but being our own unique selves, as every congregation ought to be, mm -hmm. and uh, embracing and celebrating who it is God is expecting us to be. Okay. All right. So then for the rest of this year, this is now early March, mm -hmm. what are the plans to continue the 150th anniversary? Well, we actually have two events during this month, actually. Oh. On March the 8th, we're going to do a wreath laying service uh, at the cemetery, at the extra two cemeteries. One is a cemetery where uh, the first pastor was buried, and that's uh, Nelson Mary, Mount Ararat Cemetery. Oh. And then we're going to go to the cemetery where my father is buried, oh, really? and uh, to uh, Greenwood Cemetery. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do that after our service on Sunday. We're going to do perhaps a motorcade or something uh, of people going out there having a brief service and lay a wreath at, at both places, mm -hmm. symbolizing the significance of of uh, the establishing of the church and then also the 33 years that my father served as pastor. My father actually was the longest serving pastor of the congregation. Oh really? The second longest years. was Nelson Mary. Oh, oh yeah, really? So the that's first great. Pastor. The first okay. pastor and the 16th pastor. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And then, all right, so after March and then what else? Well is then we have year? something else in the month of March which uh, basically is our revival. Oh. We call it our spiritual renewal week mm -hmm. and that'll be March 16th through the 18th. And during March 16th, 18th, our guest preacher will be the Reverend Dr. Marcus Cosby, who's the pastor of the Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church out of Houston, Texas. He is a very strong, very dynamic preacher. And we hope that people will come and to share and be blessed. The service will start at 6 o'clock p.m. Uh, those dates, again, March 16th through the 18th. And it's open to everyone. Open to everybody. Everybody, as we say. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then beyond March, what... what then we're doing plan? also, uh, later on in the year, we're going to do something that is a community service project, and we're still developing the idea of what it is mm -hmm. so that we can demonstrate that our concern and our celebration is not just internal, mm -hmm. but it is external as well. Mm -hmm. We're planning to have what we're calling a homecoming on the first Sunday in October, okay. where we are encouraging, inviting all persons who ever had any association, any connection with First Baptist Church Capitol Hill mm -hmm. to come and to uh, celebrate with us. One of the former pastors will be coming to preach for us, the Reverend Dr. Wallace Charles Smith out of, um, out of Washington, D.C. He actually used to pastor in wow. Philadelphia. Oh, really? Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, we're asking him to come and to preach for us on that first Sunday. Mm -hmm. And then the big celebration is going to be on the second Sunday in December when we will actually culminate our year of celebrating uh, where the Reverend Dr. Freddie Haynes uh, out of Dallas, Texas is going to be our uh, going, is going to be our guest preacher. Wow, this yeah. sounds like a very exciting year. It is. Ahead. It really is. Yeah. And uh, we also, but uh, still on the drawing board, looking to perhaps have a concert of some sort mm -hmm. uh, during the course of the year and uh, as a part of our celebration because we are a congregation that uh, is very musically inclined. We've always had a very strong affinity toward music and understanding the context of music in our worship. And so we're going to do that at some point. Not quite sure when, not quite sure what it is, mm -hmm. but we do ask everyone to stay tuned okay. and keep their ears open for that. And if uh, people want to know more or find out what's coming up, you have our website? Yes, we have our website, which is www.firstbaptistcapitalhill.org. And that's www.firstbaptistcapitalhill.org. Okay. We also have a Facebook page. Oh. We also can be found on Twitter, so you can just um, Google uh, First Baptist Church Capitol Hill and all that should pop up. Okay. If not, just call the church office, area code 615-255-8757. Okay, all right. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Um, and, and good luck with the celebration. It sounds like it's going to be very dynamic. We're excited. And we look forward to hearing more about it. Uh, make sure you let us know. And we expect so, to see your face. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I and will, yours too. Yes, I will be in attendance for some of it. Very good. I am sure. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. All right.